talk about the artist who is behind us, the one work. So we have here Stuart Boggs, Rowan Matthews, Francis, can't read my writing, Altar, and Rowan Jackson. I'm looking forward to hearing what they say. So doing a big work like this with multiple artists all contributing to one work is a logistical nightmare but also a creative nightmare. So it's interesting to see that a work that's come out of it that's so consistent and, and works so well. Working on the same idea with the idea of of putting the work together as one work uh, somewhere down the track. I've never known it to happen before and what I think it meant was that it multiplied, in some ways it multiplied things by four. Well I found it really exciting um, working uh, as a group of people together because I thought that, that the we worked off each other, off each other's energy. Somebody's uh, slip of a brush up this way, going onto your canvas, added something to it too. And so, um, to me, I, I felt that was the most exciting part of the whole, but rather than doing it by yourself. And I think it required a fair bit of um, ability to change one's mind, not to have a fixed view, to listen to other artists, um, to appreciate and to be able to critique, to be open, not to be sensitive about your own work. We agreed to work basically in the same location, which is a good thing, together at the same time, as in all working at the same time on the same project, so we didn't take things off willy-nilly, so we could share things. We agreed to use the same colour palette, which we worked out Briefly, what's changed a bit on the way? Um, yeah, I kept introducing new colours that weren't, weren't they hadn't been sanctioned. On. Three months later, in July 2014, we set up at a place called Diggers Camp in Uruguay National Park. We all got there one afternoon with 16 panels as big as this, and off we went. Took four panels each into the bush or down to the beach or around the rocks or whatever, just doing black and white, black and white drawings and then we started painting it. Robin was drawn to looking behind us at the bush and at the trees and some of that craggy foreshore, whereas Stuart's, you know, the, the sort of geography of the place and the, and the cliffs and that wonderful movement that's captured there as the sea crashes to the land, they're all completely different, but they all somehow unify. With this work, for example, you know, when we were looking at the colour palette, what you do see, and you see a lot of, is blue. Um, you know, you see the blue sky, the blue sea. It starts to become a little bit um, sort of obvious, you know, a little bit cliche when you're just doing seascapes and, and, and sky. To sort of break that up and give it the ruggedness uh, was a bit of a challenge. So bringing some of that depth in it, and you can see some of the dark shadows some of the, you know, and this is why Rowan's work works really well. It's, it's taking the colour out of the equation and thinking more about the structure and the movement and, and the mood. To begin with, there was some sharing of the canvases. As I talked to somebody last night, somebody actually noted that one of those canvases looked a bit like mine and looked a bit like Francis, looked a bit like Rowan's. And we did actually use colours together and had canvases together and we used each other's ownership, I suppose. Then we pulled back from that, probably because Rowan had said that maybe it would still work if we just worked on individual canvases. We're kind of talking to each other through what we were doing on the ground uh, or up on the wall at, um, on Robin's shed. And that was a wonderful way of communicating. It wasn't until we had it on the shed wall at Robbins that we had a better overview of it and could see where the gaps were and could see from a distance the overall impact. And then things all got moved around. Suddenly uh, the panels got changed. But it was like 
working with two different things. It's the working with the actual experience and then you extract memories from that experience and you're stuck with those memories. They, they, they stick fast and then you're dealing with those and trying to be true to those. And it's two different things. It's, it's April 2015, we hung the large work in Gallery 126. Then we went to the coast again in August this year for another week. Sounds like one big jaunt, but it was, it was good fun. And the unresolved paintings were taken, and we worked on those, and we worked on these as well. So we've got multiple perspectives, um, and, and the work at the bottom here, you'll notice there's a lot of darker colours, like um, there's more black, there's a bit of gravity that pulls it down, which I quite like. Um, there's more shadow. Uh, and a lot more fractured forms and then more um, sweeps and, and softer colours as it goes up. So I think it really works well um, as a composition in itself. We, we sort of agreed on which panels we believe were resolved and yeah, finished yeah. and then everybody broke the rules. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Rowan, one of my favourites, he immediately blocked over and changed and we were all peeved, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're working on a unified thing, something that's got to come together. Um, and probably of all the artists, my work was a bit more representational. So I think I was even further pushed out of my comfort zone because I was trying to break away from just that representation of what I could see as a direct view. And what I found really helpful was to watch and observe what others were doing and their movements. It was like a beautiful choreography. But I think the best painting was done in the first week and most of the painting was done in the first week. Is there anything you would change now that you see it up on the walls or for anyone? I, I, well, I see it as still as a work in progress, but I want to stop. Do you? <laughs> when you have to stop something. You have to draw a line. Yeah. When, you, when we first did it in black and white, I kind of like that. We could have stopped then. That would have been really nice. If I did it again, I think I'd like to see us do the whole thing all at once in one go, rather than taking it away and coming back. Yeah, well, returning to it. Yes, yes. because and as an artist, you, you're, time, yeah. you're in a different mood each day, so things are different. So, it was quite a spectacle to see so many panels out there in the landscape. So people had to stop and comment, you know how it is. And there was one guy who, who what, who did we, what did we call him? We called John him McDonald. the John McDonald. Mm. He's John the critic, you know, and the art critic and the, the paper. And, and then he'd go, yeah, yeah, I think you need to bring, uh, you need to bring the trees back in there. Or he said, oh, I think that looks like a dog. It's a dog, mm. isn't it? It's a dog. <laughs> and, uh, and he would stand there for a long time. And he, every time he went past, either from the beach or back, he had to, oh, no, 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 you know. Stuart chose us well, I think, because we all got on well and didn't mind each other, respected each other's opinion, and I think that's a big thing. Yeah. <laughs> saying that um, he was suggesting it go to a, a poster gallery, maybe Cox Harbour, um, because, you know, they would have an affinity with the place. Last time, I walked out the back and saw all the natives and 